Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eves and I'd like to welcome my three guests today to discuss an exciting new launch that's happening in your area. Let me first introduce you to everyone and they're all joining from the Ericsson Digital Services Department. So firstly, we have Monica Zethan, who is Head of Solution Area Packet Core. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much, Sally. Nice to be here. And likewise, thank you. And next we have Eva Heffels, Head of Marketing and Communications. Welcome to you, Eva. Thank you, Sally. Fantastic to be here. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. And next we have Ezra Kojitek Norell, who is Head of Solution Line, UDM and Policy. A warm welcome to you, Ezra. Thank you, Sally. Great to be here. Hi there. Thank you. And welcome to you all. Can't wait for our conversation today. There's been so much news coming out of Ericsson recently, such a commitment to innovation, which I absolutely love to see, both with the 5G RAN slicing launch last month. And it just seems that you're continually adding new additions, both on the hard hardware side, like for example, the new 20 kilo radios, but also today the new launches on the 5G software side, which I've really enjoyed learning more about. So the race is very much on with network vendors supporting their customers to roll out 5G. So I want to explore what is top of mind for Ericsson at the moment when it comes to offering customers technology choices. What makes customers choose to work with you? So perhaps if I could take that to Eva first. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sally. I mean, the uh, uptake of 5G have been just exceptional. And we are now having over 130 uh, uh, commercial contracts and 80 live networks around the globe, all powered by Ericsson. And on top of that, we have uh, over 150 orchestration contracts uh, in an area that's really, really important uh, to us. And it's growing and important, actually. And, you know, we know that our customers obviously have a choice. So when they choose us um, you know this this is super super uh, we're super proud and that's why we're so proud of the numbers as well uh, our decision to very early on invest in spectrum sharing cloud native and automation is one reason I think customers choose to work with us we have a competitive portfolio but besides the um, technology leadership, it's also our ambition to really make them successful with 5G by enhancing mobile broadband services and tapping into enterprise potential. And that's why you're seeing that we're adding all these additions to our portfolio in order to make them succeed. One big, big area is, of course, network slicing, where we allow our customers to dedicate network resources in order to capture that enterprise potential, for example. But I would say most of all, um, our customers choose us because of our people. They know we put the best engineers to develop and deliver that code to them in, you know, in a format that makes, you know, adds a lot of value uh, to our customers. So it's, of course, when we get um, recognized by uh, an external partner like Gart uh, Gartner in their magic uh, quadrant for 5G, it's not only a proof to ourselves, uh, and a rec it's also recognition and a confirmation for our customers that they chose to partner with a leader. Absolutely. I love that. I love what you said there, bringing people to the fore. I always say it's the people alongside the technology. It makes such a huge difference. And you're really kind of active listening there to what customers want and that continual investment in innovation and that recognition, as you mentioned, by Gartner. Fantastic to see. I love that. And very well deserved. So I think, Monica, I'll turn to you now. Um, I've read up about a new addition, the Ericsson's 5G Core Policy Studio, and it's very much piqued my interest. I really want to find out more about this. What do you think we're seeing now with the trends in 5G, especially the move into enterprise space, network slicing, and of course, use cases beyond? It feels to me things are getting more complex. So we need more automation to be able to deliver the actualization, the expected speeds that 5G can offer. So with this in mind, what will the new policy studio do to help service providers? Mm. No, it's a great question, Sally, and and clearly, I mean, I'm I'm quite excited to have the chance today to you know to talk about our new launch. Uh, it's really the the five G core policy studio. It's really a network programmability tool, right? That will give you the the opportunity to have a central management of all the network core policies, both for five G and four G, and and manage these in a very easy and flexible way. So you know, as the world now everything is going digital. Uh, we need the network programmability to really be able to 
uh, dynamically, you know, adapt the network to the varying workloads that's going to come over this network. But then, so if we now launch this, what does this, you know, 5G Core Policy Studio do, Studio really do for the service providers? You know, and from their perspective, this will give them an end-to-end -end visibility of all the different options they have to set the different policies to create new use cases with one single command. So we really reduced, you know, the effort and the time to market. Uh, and now as, you know, 5G is rolling out at scale, uh, the desire and the demand for service differentiation, you know, is really just getting, you know, tougher, right? And with a tool like this, you, you need to be able to do the adaptations, you know, swiftly, not too much of a manual intervention, but with this way, you can actually create new services and have them out in the market and, you know, with speed. So if you think, you know, we talk about 5G use cases, you know, we talk about drones, the mining, healthcare, gaming, you know, each of these services require, you know, their unique connectivity, their specific quality of service. So, of course, the tool is a way to translate that and actually you know, make that happen uh, in an automated way and actually realize the, you know, the true possibilities that the 5G networks will bring. Absolutely. I love that. Is I mean, complexity is coming up in so many C-suite conversations at the moment, whether it's a CIO or CMO roles. And I think everything you're describing there is reducing that simplicity. It's making it simple, but not simply. You've still got that incredible sophistication. So huge, huge advance forward and really able to actualize those use cases that you brought to life there. So you're really making that sound effortless. I love I love what you're describing there. So on that point, I think it'd be fantastic now to speak to one of the key people who's been behind this development. So over to you, Ezra, if I may, to explain a little bit more about how you make something so complex to something more simple and really highly productive for service providers. Sure. Let's have a deeper look on how the 5G Core Policy Studio works. As Monica said, this tool gives service providers end-to-end -end visibility and the centralized control of all network policies in, in one place. So the network policies are the key parameters to program how the communication services should be delivered by the network based on a predefined either static or dynamic conditions. So a good control of all these network policies will enable service differentiation and also enable service providers to design tailored connectivity solutions across different industrial segments and towards a multitude of connected devices. So there are two main categories of policies we can control with the 5G Core Policy Studio. Category one is the network configuration policies. These are to, to control the access to different network slices and services and to define the optimal use of radio, transport and core network resources. The second category is the service configuration policies. These are to determine the characteristics of the specific connectivity service. Then we are talking about beat rates, latency, charging rules and service access. So the flexible combination between these two different categories of uh, policies and some predefined static and dynamic con conditions, these are the essence for the design of granular end-to-end -end services to address specific use cases and connectivity needs in both consumer and, and enterprise segments. So 5G Core Policy Studio has been designed to help service providers in that by offering a easy to use user interface to visualize all the available policies, both in 4G and 5G networks, and also to configure and combine them together in an end-to-end -end service uh, perspective. It at the same time enables a common control of automation for all these network policies by simultaneous activation of all the required rules and enforcing them to different nodes in the network. Just to give you an idea of the level of simplification we are talking about that we bring with YG Core Policy Studio, we estimate up to 70% savings in OPEX for policy configuration activities if comparing to a scenario without the 5G Core Policy Studio. Wow, that's impressive. 70% savings in OPEX. That is, that is really, really exciting. And thank you for taking the time to really go into the detail about that as well. That's superb to know. Thank you very much. And it also brings to mind another area that I think Ericsson does a particularly strong um, focus on, which is research. Uh, brings to mind as one example, the Ericsson Mobility Report. And within that, there's a huge increase in 5G subscriptions described, despite the pandemic experience. So I'd love to drive in a little bit more now into some of the forecasts and insights that come from that report. And maybe over to you, Eva, for this one. Thanks, Sally. I mean, it, 
we are really proud of these reports and, and, and they're really helpful both for, for ourselves, but of course, uh, specifically for our customers. And, and the latest report then, we forecast actually by 2026, we're going to have 3.5 billion 5G subscription. So it's a huge momentum, just like you were saying, a huge momentum. Uh, and this is despite the pandemic. Our customers are switching on 5G. So if I just take an example, today we have 8 billion uh, mobile subscriptions around the world more than, than we have people. And actually 220 million uh, were activated, subscriptions were activated on a 5G capable device just in Q4 last year. So it is a fantastic momentum and we're just gonna see it accelerate. Um, and you know, the, the fantastic part of this is also that we, we usually say that 5G was made for innovation. And we saw a lot of innovation on 4G. We can just imagine the amount of innovation we're going to see now with all this uptake. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I think as well, innovation for business, but also for society as well. And again, mm -hmm. your, your long term commitments to areas like Connect to Learn and Tech for Good more broadly, I think is fantastic. So, yeah, made for innovation and innovation for everyone is kind of where I'm at on this. So super excited about that. Thank you for bringing that to life. I really appreciate it. Uh, and maybe over to Ezra now. We've touched here about 5G May for innovation. What are you seeing in terms of the new innovation we'll see maybe over the next five years? Mm -hmm. 5G will enable innovation in many different areas, empowering both the consumers and enterprise to do things they cannot even imagine today. So if we take a snapshot in the enterprise area that we're talking so much about, based on a global study we conducted with leading 5G service providers, the most common industry use cases they aim to prioritize in the short term are in the, in the area of transport and logistics, manufacturing, energy and utilities, and healthcare. So there are dozens of new use cases being explored in these areas. Some are, for example, the usage of connected drones for inspection of equipment and facilities located further away, as in uh, oil platforms in open waters or, or to support the rescue services. And industrial digitalization is a very vast area to be explored, from monitoring to automation, safety and remote control of devices. So the industries are to greatly benefit from 5G. We are exploring with partners at the same time some interesting use cases with collaborative robots, where the robots work together with the humans in assembling parts on a production cell. For that ultra low latency connectivity and safety of people closer to the robots are very essential and 5G technologies are needed to cope with these requirements. So smart cities, remote health diagnosis or even surgeries, sports, mining, the possibilities are, are just so many that we could talk for our Sally. Absolutely, could indeed, couldn't we? Absolutely amazing. I think another area may be integration as well across IT and IIoT as well. I think exciting times, really, really the area of integration is so exciting. Again, you brought that to life brilliantly. Thank you so much. I think here we're really moving from use case conceptualization, some things we've talked about for a while, to true actualization opportunity here enabled by 5G. So I think this is super exciting. I think the possibilities here are definitely one for another conversation because we could indeed talk for hours on that. So going back to some of the research we mentioned earlier, so many great reports coming out from Ericsson looking at the 5G potential for business and the use cases that people can read up on. So back to you, Monica, on this one. I understand your team were behind the new tool that will be a fundamental piece to enabling service innovations. Would you like to say anything to the team there? Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you, Sally, for the opportunity to do that as well. You know, and I think... You know, I would really like to thank them for always being a step ahead, you know, putting themselves in the shoes of our customers and, and also be able to see what demand will they have, you know, and take that demand, take it all through our development processes and through that, you know, deliver, you know, state of the art cloud native software to really be a solution to the need that they have identified will be there. Uh, and I would say, honestly, it impresses me every day. So I would just want to say really a big thank you to, you know, the really talented R&D teams, you know, behind this particular launch now with the 5G Core Policy Studio. But in general, I would say across all of, all of Ericsson, it's a fantastic team that we have. That's wonderful. I love that. It's so important to take a moment to say thank you and to, to celebrate the team and the people behind the technology. So I couldn't agree more. So important to showcase that. Thank you, Monica. And honestly, it's been a real joy speaking to all three of you, Monica, Eva and Ezra. Thank you so much for your time today. And I really hope the audience has joined our conversation and there's so much more to find out about. So 
please do take a link, look at the links provided alongside this post and you can find out more. And also you can listen again to the launch event available on demand. Looking forward to speaking to you all again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.